Alyssa's not your gymnast, is she? Oh, okay. She wants a lot of real estate. Two gymnasts. Right there, watch! I saw it. I saw it. She stood up the way up. Alright. I did see it. Slow water. Um, she can use it. Yeah. But the problem is, the judges are not going to be sideways. Right. Most sometimes likely. you see it, sometimes you don't. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Hopefully, if you don't see it, the other person does. But what you should have seen from the side, from the side, is that she never really, she wasn't squirting in the turn. You can see that. She finishes late. You know why she finishes late, a little late? A good, this is a coaching thing. The turn is coordinated with a shift of the wrist. You know, when you do a regular giant, the wrist shift and you post. And by the way, when you see kids work bars and you see this thing, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That little bounce. Yeah. Those kids understand the rhythm and the swing of the bar. Yeah. You know, they, there should be peaking on bars. And, and our eyes all catch it. We know there was something special. But if one of the things to look for is that, you know, she's bending the bar up. That means she really weighted the bottom, really kicked right, really shifted the hands at the right time. And back to turning, Kids that ship early enough in post, <coughs> ship post, they'll stop on top or near the top. And shouldn't really stop, it should pass through. So. Okay, the, the reverse hat, uh, really hot, right? Did it turn over or not? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, so it's hot, it's great, great high. You see her feet come back towards her? Mm -hmm. That's not right. Yeah, no, yeah. that's not rotation. Yeah, she wants to show you how she is. I mean, I would like to see, it's a very nice amplitude, but I'd like to see a little more turn And she changed her hand late. You know, I'm on all paralyzed. Now, you know, we'll talk about this downswing as well. You know, you have to reduce wood stop for a second. I really felt the technical error on the uh, on the Healy was when she changed her hand in the first place. That hand needed to be changed on the way up to start that turn a little earlier. And she's all the way up. Now I'm going to change my hand and start falling. Now Healy, by by design, is a falling pirouette. I mean, that's how it was done originally until someone with backward hands figured out how to do it on the top. I don't know. I mean, that takes a very special physical component to do a Healy on top. It can't be done on top, but it's one in a million people. Very special body type. Um, secondly, with this Healy, the, the, reduce, the reduction of swing on the way down, if you don't do this, you end up in the third row of the seats over. <laughs> you've, got to reduce your, you've got to reduce your swing. And again, I thought of Mike, she actually used a very refined technique. She's rounding down. She's not piping down. I, I kind of thought that was okay. Um, and there's that bounce I was talking about. But very nice. And you see that. Those are things that should go, ooh, yeah. Too late. That's all. Um, the thing with the UEs that I see quite often, kids think that they have to get way over their turning arm, and that's where they get in trouble. Because a Huey stays right in between your arms, right? There's not a real big shifting weight change do a heel because it's going to end up right back in the center. So you'll often see it be crooked to their turning arm side. How many people have I confused so far? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is okay. Yep. Uh, okay. Before he goes, one thing um, I think we need to do with talking about some really big skills here, but we also need to remember that small skills get deductions and we need to take them. Like heck bounds that have bent knees or glide kicks that don't extend, or jump to high bars that have legs apart or knees bent, right? You yep. hear that yep. a lot. Absolutely. And I'll show you a few of those. <laughs> They're coming. Look at as, as a coach, and I don't know that it's overly 
And Gore, boy, she got her bars tight, doesn't she? Uh, this must be an old tape, because the bars are really close. You won't see so much of what she's going to do. <coughs> Line finished pretty good now. Well, her problem is, see her shoulders starting to fall? Yeah. They're going to start to fall a little early. They're falling through her hands. There's the swoop, there it is, shape for a second. These are really close bars. Okay, what are the two components that we are looking for in a release? Light rotation. Okay. <laughs> All right, now. I'll give you a, a little hint on the Jaeger. A couple things that I think they happen very fast and are hard to see, and we generally know they're there because of the result. When you get a flipper and not a riser, it typically is because their body on takeoff into the Jaeger was arched either in the shoulders or the low back severely. And what that does when you arch severely in your shoulders, and I can't do that anymore, where's that little dot? Where's that little red? Yeah. 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 Um, down like that, and the release point happens when the shoulder's low, when the severe arch in the shoulders or the lower back, you're going to get a flipper. When you get a one that looks like, you know, in the long run, I teach, I teach flip first because you never hit your feet. Your feet move out of the way too quick. Okay, so um, that's more desirable in some ways than this one that you can do that bounce back like the old days. <laughs> Okay, so um, that Jaeger uh, obviously was a little tight with the bar. Thought she was a little slop, softer in her lower back. These bars are really close. And if that's a lot of what the Jaegers used to look like. We don't see too many of them look like doing that anymore. She was a little tight, caught a little soft. There's that balance, pretty good. Let's scoot on. Okay, who got the split off the road? Okay, this is, in, this is, what you're seeing on those full twist hops is something so unbelievably hard. And she does so unbelievably well. Um, let's see, I think she bends her arms on her tongs a lot. But this is like, this is so hard to do what she's doing. Yeah, she's not quite, I know she's not quite finished, and I know there's a little elbow bend, slow motion, but this skill is so hard, and she does it so well with her head. So it's right between her arms where it's supposed to be. The bark bounces, so you know the dynamics are good. Um, that's outrageous. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I don't say that about too many things. That I say I usually have some kind of critical eye, but that's awesome. I do think she bends her arms on her toe into a I, I think this could be better right there. See it? Quarter to a half. Do you, you guys see it? You know why? Here's a little coaching thing, too. She actually goes out, she rolls her elbows out as she extends. And if she, I think if she put a little pressure on the inside, she wouldn't do that. It's not, it's not a flaw. I mean, it's not because she doesn't have the right nail or downswing. Do you have a problem with adjusting up the pants on the hot poles? No, I don't have any problem with that hot pool at all. I'm just telling you that inherently that skill is so hard. And when I see someone do it and actually land and go point, I go, that's the wild path. Hmm? Yeah, the actual yeah, little bit late for a shift, absolutely. And the second one's even a little better than the first one. Guys, this is so hard. Yeah, I thought the second one. And she moved her hands around a little 